Yo, what's up? Hey, welcome back to Comfort Cooking with Ariana. We're doing meatloaf for dinner tonight. So, Cooking for comfort. Did I say that? Did I really say that? No. Oh. <laughs> Fucker. Uh, welcome back to Comfort Cooking with Ariana. Um, Cooking for comfort. We're doing meatloaf dinner tonight. We're going to have baked potatoes. I do my meat potatoes a different way, so we're going to show you how to, I do it. And I do my meatloaf a different way. So let's get started. You need a blender or a food processor of some sort. Also half an onion. Some carrots. This is about one carrot. You're going to do your peppers in there. And I'm all about saving things. So I had some bell peppers that, um, you know, I like it when they start turning that pinky yellow color. And I'm going to freeze it. Then I can add it to soups and stews and when I need a pepper and onion mixture. So, anyway, let's start with this. Put in your food processor. And you're going to puree that. It has to get broken down to practically a liquid. Because in most people's um, meatloaf, they use a bread and a milk to, to moisten that up. I use the veggies. And this is the way I hide my veggies for my kids. So we're going to get this puree down. we can add all the rest of the stuff that we're going to add because we still have more things to add to this before we even get to the meat. So I'll be right back. All right. So we have that pretty much in a liquid form. It's going to look like a uh, carrot juice. Pretty much what it is. It's a juice of some sort. It's a veggie puree. Okay. To that, we're going to add our egg. I always thought it was lucky when you got an egg with the red streak. Old wives tell they tell you that's because the rooster tried to fertilize it. It's not. I looked it up. It's not. You're going to add a teaspoon of uh, salt. Teaspoon and a quarter. Because we're going to add something else that has a salty element. teaspoon of black pepper teaspoon and a half two teaspoons of chili powder <laughs> you like that make uh, your mind up all right we're gonna do a teaspoon of thyme in this particular instance I don't want to use whole time so I'm going to just use ground time. I'm going to do a teaspoon of that. Where's my cumin? Let's see my cinnamon. There's my cumin. Do a teaspoon of cumin. Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of cumin. Now we're going to add three mm. teaspoons of garlic. Minced garlic. Minced garlic. Or you can just do, you know, about three or four cloves. And we're going to puree that down. And then after that, you're going to add your bread. And all this blending helps me emulsify what I'm my end product. You can use bread crumbs. I'm just gonna use croutons because I'm lazy. And that's just what you do. And that's just what I do. Funny thing, when my son was teething my oldest, I used to make croutons for him. I just don't have time like that anymore. You got and you're gonna mix all of that up. Sometimes you have to play around with it because you do have the croutons in there. 
they're going to soak up some of that liquid. By the time you finish with this, it's not going to be so much of a juice anymore. It's going to be your combining uh, agent. You know, so play around with it. If I could play with the blender. done when you stop hearing like a crunch. If you get a crunch here and there, you still need to mix. Alright, that's done. Now I'm going to add some Parmesan. Don't get the stuff, the craft grated Parmesan with all types of fillers. You can get this at your local grocer, I think I paid like five bucks for this. And it lasts. Throw some Parmesan in there. It has a nice salty, nutty flavor that's gonna complement this meatloaf. You know, don't be afraid to play around with flavors. Things can go savory. They can... I got the Terminator back there. <laughs> I said, Sai. Why don't you go cook something? His dad told him. Why don't you go cook something so we can do your cooking show? He said, uh, nope. I don't wanna. Alright. So I think I've added about a quarter cup of uh, Parmesan to this whole mixture. Okay? I didn't add a lot of salt because the salt of the Parmesan, the salt of the, um, but what I will do is I'll give it one more quick whir after this is one of the few times I'll use like accent because I want all those little individual subtle flavors well, what was that you just put in accent it's um monosodium glutamate that's completely optional. Optional. So what? It's like seasoning salt? No, it's like, um, it's like a salt, but it's not it, uh, sodium salt. There's only one sodium uh, atom attached to it. You're getting into the chemistry, it's a hybrid of a salt. All right. But it brings out the individual flavors. You know, some people can't deal with the monosodium glutamate. My mom is one of those people that um, she gets headaches if she uses it. You know, so that's that. Now, I was talking to somebody the other day and they're like, how is it that you always seem to have so much food in the house? tell you shopping in my house is uh <laughs> it's an it's an adventure i will go to seven stores i have no problem doing that by uh, yourself by myself um uh, because nobody wants to go to seven grocery stores nope. but i do this because i don't like wasting the dollars i have a family to feed and so I shop wisely. I also will separate my food. Now for this meatloaf, I need more than what I've separated my meats into. If you look in my freezer, you will always see at least, yeah, it's pretty much a, a two gallon baggie filled with portioned out meat from steaks to steak stew meat to, um, Everything and anything that's a meat. Everything and anything that's a meat. But I tell you what, I'm okay. <laughs> it works for my family. Lord Jesus. So, you don't want to squeeze it though. Create kind of a well. Okay? Because what you're going to do, and this again, this works for me. 
you're going to kind of fold this in. Some people like to um, squeeze it. The problem is, depending upon how fatty your your beef is, you know, 85-15, your hands will melt the fat and start to slightly cook the meat. And then you end up with this mealy uh, loaf. I don't want it mealy. I want it to taste like a meatloaf, but I want it to have the texture of a, a grill house burger. So I don't do an awful lot of over mixing. Create another well. One of the few times you'll see me use my hands. It's kind of inevitable when you're dealing with a meatloaf. Okay, so I'm gonna finish mixing all of this together and I'll be back to show you what we're gonna do next, okay? So now that that's all mixed up, I did forget to tell you that uh, add about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of uh, cake cayenne pepper. It gives you just a different, every pepper has a different flavor. Now you're going to form that in a loaf. Do not ever make a meatloaf in a um, meatloaf pan. The oils rise up around it you know and it's kind of gross actually so form it into a loaf as nice as possible depending upon how big you want it you know that's that's on you i don't really i would say put bacon around it but yeah i'm um, just i'm not feeling that much muchness We could even throw that on the grill. You should try. You'd be picking it up before it's set. That's why you have a pan. I guess you could. Alright. So, now my loaf is formed. Let me rinse my hands off. Okay, I've brushed my hands. You want to wash your hands when you're dealing with meat. You've heard me say it. Wash your hands. When, you, when you're done messing, playing around with the carcass, Wash your hands because I don't want to transfer E. coli, salmonella, and all, what is it, um, trichomona. <laughs> it's not trichomona. It's tree something that comes from the pig. Um, you don't want to transfer that to something else. So wash your hands. Now we're just going to shave a little bit more Parmesan on it. Parmesan is not a super melty cheese. It's a hard cheese. It doesn't melt the way softer cheeses do like you know cheddars and well cheddars are pretty hard cheese too okay so now we're gonna put this in the oven i'm gonna bake it first and then i'm gonna show you how to make our our um topping to go with it you're gonna bake this for about 15 minutes while you're making your sauce 15 minutes into the baking process you're gonna kind of drench it with your sauce and then you're gonna continue to bake it for about another 20 to 30 minutes okay so That's that. Now we're going to start our uh, baked potatoes. I told you. Now I told you. I do my baked potatoes uh, differently. Some people like to uh, wrap theirs in a foil. And who wants soggy potato skin? Really? Not me. So what I do is I, I'll have washed potatoes they're washed and let's find some salt now old wives tale salt does not make water boil faster it does make it uh, boil hotter but it's going to take longer to boil I'm fine with that throw about a quarter teaspoon of salt in your saucepan Add some water. Hold on. Add some water to they're just about covered. And boil them for about 10-15 minutes. Then 
the salt is going to um, seep into the potato a little bit. So the inside of your potato salted just enough. But what, what it really does is when you start baking it, you don't bake it in a foil. You just put it on your oven rack and it, the salt that's on the potato skin, so every bite is salted. Man, <sighs> slap your knee, slap your mama. Good, I'm telling you, it's good. Um, so I'm gonna let those boil for the next 10 minutes and then I'll be back, okay? All right, now the last thing you ever wanna do is serve somebody a meatloaf with just ketchup or some kind of tomato topping. Mix that stuff into something delicious. So, I'm going to add about a cup of ketchup here. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of honey. That's one. And that's two. What I'm basically doing is making a barbecue sauce. Minus the mustard. I'm going to add some um, onion perin, Worcestershire. That was about a tea, half a teaspoon. And I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon, not even a half a teaspoon, about a quarter teaspoon of Tabasco. And you're making a glaze. So you're just going to mix that. Now, you might have to adjust. Uh, certain levels depending upon what you like I you know pretty much like mine smoky so I have to add some cumin to it too but I like it more of a barbecue-y sweet tangy not sweet let me rephrase that it's not sweet but it's not hickory smoked barbecue either and I'm looking at it, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to add some more Liam Perrin, Worcestershire. <laughs> and I definitely have to add my cumin to it. And I'm right. Let's get our cumin. The cumin adds a hint of smokiness. So about half a teaspoon of that. I'm going to add a little couple dashes more of Tabasco. And that's our glaze. That's all you have to do for that. And I use this base for um, barbecue sauce. The ketchup, the cumin. I'll add dried mustard to my barbecue sauce. And then whatever else, whatever kind of flavor I'm adding. I'm going to add some uh, fresh ground pepper. Why do I add fresh ground pepper to this and not the meatloaf? Because my the fresh ground pepper is a little um, coarser. And I don't want to bite into peppercorns on the um, or pepper cracks into the meatloaf. But it it's good in the sauce. Trust me. perfect oh, bomb.com all right back to these um baked potatoes so we've let those boil for about 15 minutes i'm gonna drain the oil oil i'm gonna drain the water off of them. our meatloaf is cooked for about 15 minutes now because we cooked our potato par cooked our potatoes in hot salty water we're going to bake them, and then the skin is going to get crusty. Crusty. It's going to get crusty, but it's going to have a salted aspect to it. Now we have to add our glaze to our, our meatloaf. You don't have to be stingy with it, but you don't want to go so over the top with it. Because you still want the flavors of the meatloaf to shine through. Alright, that's the 
your oven. Put that back in your oven to cook for another 20 minutes and um, then you'll be done. So in 20 minutes you'll have baked potatoes, meatloaf. We're gonna I'm gonna do a garlic ginger broccoli today. And that's super simple. You take some ginger, you take some garlic, you take some butter, you mix it, you throw it on the broccoli, you stir fry that real quick, and bam. You have all these different flavors, but they're complementing each one. So, I'll be back. So we have about, I don't know, maybe about 10, 15 more minutes for our um, meatloaf and our baked potatoes. I don't have any frozen broccoli, but I do have fr I don't have any fresh broccoli, but I do have frozen broccoli. So I'm gonna first kind of heat that up in my my uh, saucepan. While I'm heating that up, I'm just gonna slice some onion real thin, and I'm not even gonna use that much because I'm gonna use more garlic. But I, I like the combination of garlic and onion. I actually only use garlic because my husband likes garlic and I like onion. I remember when we first got married, <laughs> I, uh, I have a tendency to eat spring onions. And I'll eat those by the bunch. And I think I have like three bunches of green onions this one day. Now mind you, I haven't been married but maybe a week or two. And I never stopped to think I'm eating these onions. But I'm also sitting like directly in his nose path. And he he looks over to me and he tells me with this like seriously sweet but really apologetic face. He's like, I don't know how to tell you this, but your breath stinks. I don't eat spring onions like that anymore, but I do like my onions. So from there I'm gonna shave um some fresh ginger. You can use powder ginger, but I'm just gonna use you know some shaved ginger maybe about a quarter of a teaspoon I'm gonna put that in there bam that's that let me get some garlic now if I have fresh garlic I use fresh garlic right about here but I don't so I'm gonna put about what is this this is about a quarter teaspoon so half a teaspoon of garlic into that. We're going to add about half a teaspoon of salt. A quarter teaspoon. Now I'm going to wait to some of this uh, liquid from the frozen broccoli starts to uh, melt off only because I'm going to add some butter. Now you can use olive oil, you can use grapeseed oil, coconut oil, it doesn't it's unrefined coconut oil but um just use some broccoli so with this this has more of a can you hear me a fork an asian-y kind of fusion if you wanted to you could add orange juice to it to add a sweet element to the um the flavors i'm not going so much for asian as i just want to taste that ginger that onion and that uh, garlic in these. Now we got that going. Now we're just going to add about, I don't know, let's do half a teaspoon of butter. Can you smell that? It smells good, doesn't it? You can't smell it. Camera guy can. And he's just looking at me like, my sniffer's not working today. Oh, zero tech time! Now you don't want to agitate it too much. Keep it on a high. Let me check this meatloaf. Oh, that's looking delicious. Our potatoes are practically done. And that's that. Now, depending upon how much salt you like, add salt. I would rather have somebody um, salt their own veggies because I am I would eat veggies without salt. But you do want to add just a little bit in the cooking process. So that's what I did. If, if you want to add more afterwards, 
Do you, boo? Do you? So. Avalanche. Now, ideally, what I would want this to do is get some type of brownie. So again, I don't want to agitate it. You don't want those delicious little florets to come apart and degrade completely. So let it sear, let it fry. If you feel like you need more butter, add more butter. I would probably go with more of a, you know, a grapeseed oil at that point because the butter for me adds a flavor, not so much the oil to sear, but the dry heat will. So I'll be back. And we'll plate it all up and I'll show you the end. All right. You like how every time we come back, I say, all right. Our meatloaf is done. Now you want to be careful because all the added oils from the meatloaf, they're in the pan. And that's why I put my meatloaf like this. I don't want it surrounding per se. I can deal with the bottom. I can't deal with it on top. So the first thing we're going to do, let's get this baked potato. Ooh, hot. And it's perfectly Ooh, hot. It's perfectly cooked. Let's get our butter in there. Don't use margarine, people. Butter. So that's that. Close it back up. Fluff it a little bit. You have that on. Now we're gonna start working on our meatloaf. So now we have our meatloaf. And it's seasoned from the inside. Remember all that delicious goodness we used? And now we're going to get to our broccoli. That's a super simple dinner. You want the Roblox toys? Okay. It's a super simple dinner. Baked potato. Let's put some cracked pepper on that. We're going to add some um, sour cream, but I like my pepper to touch the uh, potato, not the sour cream. You don't have to add salt unless you want to. Remember, you parboiled it, parboiled it, par, par, parboiled it in uh, salt water. So it is salted to a degree. And what else are you salty you want? And that, my friends, is your meatloaf from scratch, your saute broccoli with onions, garlic, and ginger, and your baked potato. So, if you like this video, so, if you like the video, give a thumbs up. If you want to see more delicious goodness coming your way, hit that subscribe button. If you want to drop me a comment, I'll respond. So, until next time, happy eating.